guys welcome back to the channel today we're doing a little headlight restoration as you guys can see old new old new we're working on this infinity m35 here it belongs to my cousin and uh brought it over see if i could uh bring back that new look on these headlights but uh as you guys can tell the lens on these headlights not that great they've seen better days so we're gonna try to bring it back to life just like this one so the procedure for how I got this result pretty simple we used a couple of things here a random orbital polisher a foam correcting pad and a uh, finishing pad and of course we pretty much compounded and polished the headlights but before that you want to clean off the area first make sure it's clean and clear of all contaminants and of course you want to clay bar it first before uh, polishing anything or touching anything with your uh, uh, polishing pads before we change this headlights life let's just quickly look at the current status of it a lot of that buildup that is pretty much the uh, factory clear coat just taking its years of uh, sunlight and abuse definitely affects your visibility at night that's why it's pretty important to uh, make sure your headlight housing or the lens are not uh, distorted in any way so for this part we're gonna go ahead and spray down the the lens here with uh, some no rinse uh, it's obviously been mixed I don't know the uh, the diluted ratio but it's no rinse we're gonna spray it down got a piece of clay find a nice fresh piece to start and we'll go ahead and clay down the headlight lens here Go ahead and dry it out. There you go, you're done. So, so far we have cleaned up the headlight. We clayed it down. I used no rinse as my claying solution. Uh, once we dried that down, I went ahead and put masking tape all around because it's a very funky angle and I know I'm going to be uh, spraying everywhere on. So it'll help and make cleaning a lot easier. So as for our tools, we have here the random orbit. I'm using a Griot's Garage correcting pad and Meguiar's 105 as our compound. Uh, this stuff is pretty abrasive. This is also very abrasive so maybe one or two passes uh, anything more than that you are uh, you're risking the clear coat there so here's the first pass with the 105 and the correcting pad and already made a huge difference and of course you don't want to use a uh, six inch random orbit that's not the correct size for doing headlights uh, that's more for doing actual panels like a hood or your trunk or something headlights are just too awkward they're small spaces uh, you can't really reach those tiny corners so I think it'd be a lot easier if you bought one of those drill attachments uh, for a drill gun or impact drive or something like that because I'm sure that would be a lot smaller more fitting for this but that's what I have right now so I have to uh, work with it hence the whole masking tape I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a wipe down on everything but
And there you have it. Compound and polish make a world of a difference. Now this is the part where I would uh, throw on that protective layer since we, uh, we kind of wiped down a bit of the original clear coat here. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is. This will probably last us a few months to a year maybe. Maybe, of course, you want to put some sort of clear coat or some sort of UV protectant just to prolong the life and so you don't have to do this procedure again. And of course a reminder, the six inch uh, random orbit, not ideal for headlights. Pick yourselves up the attachments that they have for uh, drill guns. Those are much more fitting for uh, headlights. All right, so here's everything that we used to get the results on that M35. Uh, now remember, I don't recommend using uh, this dual action random orbit uh, polisher because it's a six inch one. Way too big. The pads just, just won't work, guys. Headlights, they're small areas. Much, much better to get those attachments for your drill gun or impact driver. Uh, way smaller, way more appropriate, unless you can change the head on this one, but six inches is just absurd. You're not going to get all those corners and crevices. Not recommended, but it works. But moving along, we used Griot's Garage uh, correcting pad. We finished it off with uh, Griot's Garage finishing pad. And real quick, just wanted to show you what it looks like when you don't maintain your pad. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to try to wash it, see if I can get it back to life, but no bueno. Here's our cutting compound. We use McGuire's 105 Ultra Cut. For our polish, we use Meguiar's 205, uh, and of course we clayed it, and I used no rinse and shine, uh, but we mixed it, of course, because this is meant uh, for mixture. But again, folks, you don't really need to spend big bucks to obtain those results. You don't need to spend $70 on this, which, by the way, is very cheap and very affordable uh, for a car polisher. So highly recommend that one. Uh, but of course you could always just use those attachments for drill guns, guys. Oh, and I did forget to uh, mention all the microfibers that you will need. Just stack them up. Don't even worry about where you place them or anything. Let them fall to the ground, actually. And a reminder, folks, to always clean the area with isopropyl alcohol to clean off any remaining compound uh, before you do your polish. Just a little reminder to make sure your workspace is clean and you don't contaminate different products. That is going to do it for today's video, folks. Hopefully you guys learned something out of it. Now I'll catch you all on the next one. Don't treat your microfibers like that.